There is a memory organization or hierarchy. You see. At the bottom, you see tape is a memory device. This is like a cassette, audio cassette. It was the mm, serial data storing and retrieving method on a magnetic film. Fil I mean, plastic film on which magnetic metal is uh, uh, sprayed, and uh, on that magnetization is done for one. If not magnetized, then it is zero like that. Information is stored. This is a serial. I mean, uh, read-write method can be done here. I mean to say, if you say like a uh, cassette, if you want to listen the song of the last uh, last song in the track or in the uh, cassette, then you have to rewind. Okay, then only you can do that. Similarly, this is also the case. Same thing. Serial, you can do one by one, or you have to do um, first forward or do something like that. Until is going to that uh, particular location, you cannot access the data from that uh, location. Then your disk. This is your hard disk. It is a magnetic tape. Tape. See. This is possible. Then a hard disk is DD. Sometimes this uh, hard disk drive indicating that, and hard disk will be there inside. In this uh, hard disk platter, kind of hard platter will be there, or there is a platter, platter like a plate, multiple plates, and the right head will be there. This uh, memory tape is very slow, very very slow. Very slow. This is a little faster, faster than faster than tape. It normally in the hard disk number uh, seven thousand two hundred RPM. We have discussed already. Okay, and the speed revolution per minute, and then main main. Uh, memory main memory is semiconductor memory that is uh, um, DRAM, okay, DRAM, dynamic RAM made up of one MOSFET. Then first cell is made up of one MOSFET and one uh, storage capacitance. I, I think we have discussed. Pratham uh, is there? Yes, sir. So we have discussed or not DRAM? Yes, sir. We have discussed. Okay, then. This is all external. See, magnetic tape, or disk, or even DRAM are external to the processor. Processor is here in this dotted box. All the components, three components, you can see that the processor, registers, and cache. This is one chip in which all these things are there. So, in in which if any memory is there, that is uh, firstly the cache and registers. Two, two things is there. Registers, if you talk about the registers, then and if you process, take the processor example of 8085, then it is having register like accumulator, which is also called A, then temporary register, then B register, C register, uh, D register, E register. Individually, they are 8 bit register. Individually, they are 8 bit register. They, they can be combined also. H also individually 8 bit register. L also individually 8 register. These are 16 bit register PC and SP stack pointer and program counter. And uh, you have external DRAM, this thing, okay, of 64 kilobyte in 8085 processor. Okay, anyway, I am relating this with uh, a particular processor, but the diagram here or memory hierarchy given here is a generic. Okay, this uh, values may be varying. Uh, from processor to processor. Then the question is, uh, processor very high speed, okay? Whereas the tape is very slow, so to increase the speed, the faster hard disk was uh, developed. But still, the processor is so fast compared to hard disk that uh, 
processor will uh, send a signal for read operation or write operation from the memory. OK. Or the hard disk. It has to wait for a long time. Like a day for it. OK, it is so fast. So to bridge the gap between the processor and the hard disk, another memory was designed that is uh, DRAM. OK, DRAM was quite faster, much fa faster than faster and then disk okay of course this disk term is a very generic it may have a floppy disk i mean a floppy disk it may have a two type of floppy disks we have discussed that and it may have a um, compact disk cd and uh, dvd mm. and hard disk all are included in this disk term okay all are slow of course, out of these floppy disk, DVD, CD, and hard disk. Hard, hard disk is the fastest. Okay, so possibly hard disk uh, actually uh, hard disk should be uh, kept in separate category, uh, like you know, uh, compared to other two. Here you should put load floppy, floppy disk, and uh, here you can put CD or DVD. Okay, that will be better because uh, hard disk is quite faster than this. Uh, this disk. This disk. So anyway, uh, still main memory. Uh, I mean, main memory was quite faster than all those the uh, memories at the bottom, but still it is much slower than the processor speed. Okay. So to bridge the gap between the processor speed and the memory speed, uh, a very high speed memory is uh, placed inside the uh, processor that is called cache okay cache and this cache may be three level of cache uh, uh, level one cache level two cache and level three cache okay if you you see your processor you will see this kind of configuration your uh, uh, i mean the laptop will also describe this this processor I mean, cache, uh, memory, memory, uh, cache memory will be specified by L2 or L1, etc. Then, uh, other than this, you have the registers and registers, as I said, that uh, this kind of registers will be there in the uh, memory in the, in the uh, processor itself. So, this uh, is particularly for 65, 85 processor of Intel. It may be a little different, uh, name may be different, or bit size. Or, or uh, what size rather uh, per per uh, per uh, row the byte or word or double word i have said so that may be differing from processor to processor maybe from intel to uh, amd etc anyway my point was that the hierarchy of memory here is indicating that uh, someone is very slower so high speed memory has been designed then that is also not sufficient. So rather, early cache has come inside the a processor and register also are there. Okay. So normally uh, in our uh, lab, we do research on cache memory for your uh, design project, etc. You see, you might see my publications um, mostly on cache memory. It is called ACRAM, static random access memory. HRAM. Okay, six times test required. In the industry standard was six times the MOSFET is required. This. So with this, well, uh, we are we are a little out of context here, but this concept should be clear to you. Where why some faster faster memory, why slower memory? This uh, capacity wise, very small capacity. Remember that. Okay, this is uh, higher capacity, higher or larger value uh, can be a larger. Or uh, data can be stored. Mm. Now we'll go to the uh, next slide to continue our discussion on memory and its decoding, plus memory cycles, read cycle and write cycle, etc. Few definitions here. Firstly, the access time. When you try to read content from the memory, 
the time required is, is called the access time. We call normally in our research system logic read access time. Access time. We denote it with with the T R A. T R A. Read access time. And uh, for write operation, we write uh, we use write access time, and we say T W A. Here terminology, whatever is used, you go with that. For reading, it is told read, uh, not read, just access time. Okay, the access time of the memory read operation is the maximum time from the application of the address to the appearance of the data at the data output. Okay, or on the bus. This is the definition of access time whereas for write operation the write cycle time is the uh, terminology used it is the maximum time from the application of the address to the completion of all internal memory operations required to store the data okay so these definitions would be used uh, for your case because it is taken from your book uh, you go by uh, book okay Read, uh, read for read operation access time it is told for write operation it is called write uh, cycle time okay. one example is taken of a cpu which is having a frequency of 50 megahertz and 50 megahertz will give a, a period of frequency is 50 megahertz 15 to 10 to the power 6 hertz and period will be what? Period is equal to a time t is equal to what? t is equal to 1 of f is equal to what? 1 upon 50 into 10 to the power 6 hertz. I'm sorry, uh, second. Okay. Or if you uh, write it in this way. Uh, it is, is uh, 10, 1 by 10 to 5. How much uh, in this uh, uh, period? Period will be 5 into 10 to the power 7. I am writing. And then I am writing. Uh, 1 one divided by 5 is what? 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 7. It becomes, I am multiplying with 100. So it is 10 to the power minus 9. Is it not? So one nanosecond period is 20 nanoseconds and one nanosecond is 10 to the power minus, minus 9. So is it uh, okay? I mean, for this example, CPU? Yes, yes Pratham. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Okay, net was giving problem. Anyway, we'll continue. So, hello. So, is it the calculation? I mean, telling that 50 megahertz uh, CPU is taken and hence uh, its period is 20 nanoseconds. Is it understood? Yes, sir. Pratham? Okay. Suppose now this, that CPU communicates with the memory with an access time that is read access time of 65 nanoseconds and a write cycle time of 75 nanoseconds right this is uh, as you read read delay is uh, less compared to the write delay the number of call pulse, uh, clock pulses required for a memory request is the integer value greater than the or equal to the larger of this 
access time and write second time. That means how many clock cycles uh, will be required for uh, this memory request will be uh, uh, how many clock pulses in this case? Hmm. Since the period of the CPU clock is 20 nanoseconds and the large at the access time uh, I mean, and reached a uh, lot at the access time and the right side time is 75. So, four, four period is required actually, and 80, uh, 80 nanosecond is uh, at least four period means uh, 80 nanoseconds, but before five nanoseconds, the right operation will be uh, completed. Is it not? Yes? Yes, sir. So, five minutes before, uh, five nanoseconds before the right operation can be. So, four clock cycle, at least four clock uh, pulses are required to complete the this uh, uh, memory access. Memory access means uh, both reading and write operation. Reading takes less time in this example, 65 nanoseconds, whereas write operation takes 75 nanoseconds. So because of this, four period is required now. Let us uh, have a look on the Timing diagram. Mm -hmm. Right operation is uh, discussed first, and this mm -hmm. right cycle is discussed. So in this, in that the address has been placed or made valid on the address data bar, address address lines, and the uh, on the rising edge of the clock, uh, T1 rising, you are applying. Okay. And memory enable signal, which is also nothing but uh, con uh, chip select signal, we have discussed about this, is all also raised or made high at the same time, same rising edge of T1. But write operation, uh, for write operation, you make low, read write bar, you see, read write bar. If, if this line goes high, then read operation will be performed. If this line goes low, then right operation will be performed. One line is good enough to. Hmm, we have also discussed earlier and drawn also circuits, I mean, block diagram like this. Block right? diagram in that I have shown that you have, uh, say, eight line input. Okay. Input. In this I say eight line output. Output. You have controls. In one of the diagram, I have said the right read control and right control and uh, enable. This enable or CS, chip select or select line. Okay. So these are the things we have discussed. Three, uh, three, three controls or one, 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 one. It can be one only. Read only right bar if you. Uh, right where if you use then only one is good enough both are not required so we have understood that so this enable signal is a uh, uh, lowered for right operation at the rising edge of t2 okay the right cycle in part i mean one part one means this diagram is talking about so those four pulses T1, T2, T3, T4 because we know 75 nanoseconds is required. So with three we cannot do. Three pulses is not sufficient for uh, right operation. Four at least is required. Okay, with a cycle time of 20 nanoseconds for a right operation, the CPU must provide the address and data. I'm sorry, address and input data to memory. I mean, what it has to do? right operation you'll be sending the address it will be enabling the chip or chip select it will be sending the control that is right control for that you need to make this line a zero then you have to supply the data input for right operation and that is given after one clock pulse later okay so that's on that's what it is given uh, here at the rising as of t2 
So, and you see here that will go to next cycle. You see here it is in the valid data up to this point, but before that, your uh, write operation has been occurred. Okay. Then after that, you are able to uh, uh, make it high once again, the read write uh, signal. Okay. A change of the read write signal to zero to designate the write away. This once you are making it was read write signal was high here. Okay, up to this point. Now it has it has been lowered at this point onwards. It is indicating that you are performing the write operation. Okay. It is happening at the rising edge of T2. Okay. To avoid the daytime data in the other memory words, it is important that this change occurs of the signal on the at this lines have become fixed. Means at this are up to this point, at this are now settled. Okay. You know, at this should be settled. At this is what? The bits. It is uh, uh, traveling, traveling through uh, a bus. And every bus is going to offer some, you know, delay rc delay as a time constant you understand i hope so let it be settled then you send the data otherwise uh, um, some, some wrong location will be uh, written with the, in the data that's what is said here okay. otherwise one or more other words might be momentarily addressed and accidentally written over with different data. That's what is telling that wrong data written should not happen. So you send the uh, data once address is valid. I mean, and it is uh, selected. I mean, what line? This address is going to send what? Select line will be yield by decoder and that address is going to make one of the line word line zero i mean wl1 okay this kind of uh, i have shown with a decoder earlier yes or no yes sir so those one of the line will be high with select line it is you can say uh, we have this select line that select line is going to be connected to a particular bit cell we have seen so same same thing will happen okay so it has to go first to the memory then data will be and sent or valid data will be available there for writing operation. The read write bar signal must stay at zero long enough after application of the address and memory enable. Address is this one, memory enable this one. So your uh, this um, read write should be kept long, low for long time so that the uh, write operation is completed. Finally, the address and data signals must remain stable at address as well as data signals will be stable for a uh, long time. For a short time after the read write goes uh, on, I mean to say the address and data signals must remain stable for a short time after the read write goes high here is talking about okay i mean read write signal write operation was going on now you are rising up to this time is the after that also you have to uh, keep the state data high and uh, this uh, memory um, uh, sorry, address is also hmm, kept high. Memory enable is also kept high for a certain amount of time. Okay. So we have discussed about um, settle I mean, or that um, whole time, then setup time, propagation, etc. Can you remember? Why at all we have to keep uh, data valid for some time? 
Yes, sir. You? So that uh, all these requirements of the storage element is uh, satisfied. Set up time, hold time, mm. propagation delay, etc. At the completion of the fourth clock pulse, see fourth clock pulse is ending at what? This is the starting point. So ending point of T1, this is the starting point, ending point of T2, this is the ending point of T3, this is the ending point of T4. Okay. So what is to, said here, the memory write operation has ended with five minutes to spare. I mean, we, we know 75 nanosecond is required. Okay. So nanosecond is required for right operation as per our assumption. But this from here to here, it is uh, not, not here to here, from here to here. From here to here, it is 80 nanoseconds. You know, per clock cycle is what? Or sorry, uh, clock period. Per, per clock period is what? Total? 20. 20 nanosecond it is mentioned here so it is going to be 80 but our assumption still that uh, 75 nanoseconds required so possibly uh, here things will be uh, completed okay this is your rise time this is your uh, fall time this is false width and together from here to here it is uh, 20 nanoseconds so prior to that Five nanoseconds prior to that, uh, end, end of the 74, the right operation will be completed. During that time, you see another operation may be started. That's what is told here. And the CPU can apply the address and control signals for another memory request with the next T1. Next T1 is coming here. This one is next T1. During that time, you can start another read or write operation. Now read cycle. I mean, bottom uh, diagram will be looking at. Okay. See here also, when the rising age you have applied the rising age of T1 is address is uh, made valid means the processor has sent the address to the data bus or for the memory decoder. Okay. And that uh, in case of 8085 uh, processor, it will go through. Uh, pins AD 0 to AD 7, lower byte. Okay. Lower byte of address will go, 16 bit address, remember that. Lower byte. And upper byte will be A8 A to A15. Okay. Your PC is 16 bit, remember, program counter. So address is 16 bit address. And 16, which 16 bit address you can access? to the bus 16 is what uh, kilobyte kilobyte can be accessed to the bus 16 means pc is going to send the address to these lines or pins of the 805 80 27 is the 8 bit another 8 bit is here okay why i have written 80 0 to 87 can you say you have not yet studied so it will not be knowing this through this uh, lower mm, and this um, lines and these lines spins address as well as data can be sent and received okay and this will be outed during the uh, during the first, first clock pulse t1 and then uh, through the same line data can be sent or received uh, after afterwards so that's what happened in edge right in other processor may be different. So anyway, this uh, whereas this upper byte is sent through A8 to A15 pins of the processor. And this uh, is only dedicated for address, not for data. But this is, I mean, for both. This is for both. It is bi-directional, remember that. Data will be outed in this direction, all be received. Outed for write operation, okay? and uh, receive from for read operation read means you are reading from memory okay so it is bidirectional anyway uh, let me come back to the topic what we are discussing see read 
operation see the first lock uh, arising of the first lock you are sending the address okay enabling the memory chip select you can say or enable signal you can say uh, then read write you are making what high for read operation it is to be what high or low high high it is high it is high or high. let me write one okay and see data output is invalid this shaded portion is invalid data okay you are not able to read the this data into the uh, processor through this 8027 lines data will be valid when after a delay the memory will be outing the content on the bus through um, read buffer write buffer read buffer output buffer and it will be now valid and it can be a processor will be taking this uh, data into itself okay into its register actually. like accumulator b register c register etc so the cpu apply the address sets the memory enable to one and sets read write to one read write to one to designate a read operation all at the positive edge of t1 everything is happening at positive edge of t1 okay address also also sends enable sends uh, made high read write made high okay data is going to be read from the memory so initially data is invalid okay and the question is the uh, question is uh, how processor will be uh, able to know the data is valid or not then be provision memory is much slower okay processor has to wait it will be inserting the wait states when you read a microprocessor this terminology will be used memory is slower processor is um, faster memory uh, for read operation what it will do send the address enable signal it will send read write uh, signal will be sending to making making high and waiting for the uh, data okay because the memory is going to take certain time and uh, it has to wait so it will insert the it will insert the wait state i mean to say uh, say one or two clock pulse is not uh, sufficient okay suppose at this point after uh, t2 it is uh, trying to access the, uh, the um, content of the bus what it will get it will get the uh, wrong data because data is not valid so how it will it will come to know that uh, uh, the data is valid and is valid it is coming from the memory there will be a uh, signal Signal coming into processor. Suppose you decide you have the processor, so a signal will be coming. That is ready signal, ready DY. This ready signal once is going high, then uh, it will understand that the uh, data available into the um, data bus is valid. Okay, that will be taught to you later on. Now, is it understood? Read uh, operation. Yes, sir. Timing diagram only. We are discussing. the similar things will be discussed later on in my proposal the memory places the data of the what selected by the address onto the data <laughs> over clients within 65 nanoseconds it takes 65 nanoseconds here the, see it is denoted here written here 65 nanoseconds required after that only data will be valid okay. then the cpu transfer the data it turned the monopets internal registers during the positive transition of the next t1 pulse the next t1 is this one during that time it is going to take the data inside its register that register may be accumulator b register c register or any other register d register various registers i have said acha pauja mere okay now regarding array of sram we have already discussed to full strength i mean con, uh, extent but still we'll have a little relook onto it here you see that uh, this uh, chip is 64 by 8 ram means what, what is meaning by 8 yeah, what is meaning by 64k Four eighty five, four point two. The noise is coming. That's a mistake. 
Put up your mic. Now, Pratham, can you say what is meaning of uh, this 64K by 8 RAM? What is the meaning of that? It's an address is 16 bit. Mm -hmm. And input is 8 bit. Input is 8 bit, address 16 bit. Sixteen bit address is okay because it's written here. You are telling, but otherwise, what you understand by sixty-four k by eight RAM, sixty sixteen to the sixteen means what? Sixty-four k. Sixty-four k. K. Okay. One k is one zero two four. Two right? four. One zero two four. So if you multiply with sixty-four, you'll get the those many 64 into 1024 what is the value tell somebody calculate and tell me and then those many addresses are there means those many rows are there are you getting my point yes or no yes sir those many what is the value 65 those many uh, rows are there and every row is having how many bit 16 where you got it from eight it is eight bit everyone you see it is if i divide it it will be eight bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bit. Eight bit information will be stored in one address location. And we have six, five, five, three, six addresses. Those many rows are there. Okay. And things. As you can see, that input data is there. Eight bit addresses. Uh, PC will be sending this address in case of eight, uh, five. Eight, uh, this uh, input data will be coming from AD. As I said, that AD is 0 to AD 7. So that 8 pin will be coming. It will be coming in this direction. Okay. Or if it is read write memory RAM, then it may be going out also from here. Okay. To this RAM uh, inside in, inside the processor. These are the pins of um at the right five. And PC program counter is a register, internal register of our processor. To that and those registers uh, uh, and address are sent sent out okay it is coming to the decoder of, the, of this uh, ram remember that is coming to where decoder or not yes you yes, will have sir. decoder here uh, input will be 16 bit okay and you will have how many how many uh, lines you say of the decoder I was telling double way zero etc. Eight eight zero to seven. Double uh, let me write first one is double L zero. I was writing double L one, W L three and two, etc. So last one will be what? W L seven. No, you have the six. WL fifteen. Hmm? WL fifteen. How? Uh, sir, sixteen. Mm -hmm. Bit of entry is there. Aman. Aman. Bushra. Uh, sir, WL three. Two to the power four sixteen. So you have the input to the decoder. So two, two input lines are there in the decoder. Hmm. How many will be here? Hmm. How many will be here? Four. Sir, four. Four. If you have a total 16 then to the power 16 what is that uh, 65536 
then why you are mistaking? Uh, you have started with the uh, six five five three. Tell what five, five or six? Five three six. Understood. Th those many rows are there. Now it is clear. Yes. You have to address. I mean, point to that. Th those many. I mean, those. I mean, those lines are becoming high too, uh, and it is going as a. A memory select or chip select a memory select line or, or enable line okay. that you have seen. I have I have shared in the bit cell bit cell. There is a select line. Okay, there is an input input. There is an output output, and there is a uh, read a write bar. Can, can you remember that? At the beginning, I said with the bit of information. These are the um, information sticker. This is the output. All are all three are input. Are you uh, remembering? Yes. So the select line as the select line input. You know the eight bit data input is coming. Okay, that is eight bit in this case. Okay, yeah. and uh, address. I mean after decoding, uh, after decoding sixteen bit is here and one line is coming here high and it is going to select. Okay. Similarly, if you have eight, uh, eight uh, uh, flip flops, okay, because eight bits can be stored in a row. So eight uh, bit cell will be there, and all bit cell will be selected in this way. Are you getting? Yes or no? Suppose this is a WL zero. So you have eight cells, bit cells, isn't it? The select line will be coming here, and it will be enabling. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will be there. They will be selected. Then you are sending the read write uh, read write uh, control signal. That will also go everywhere, isn't it? It will be going everywhere. We have seen a lot of things uh, in this regard. You must um, be able to uh, remember all those things. Hmm. Output one is coming out from here. Similarly, will be coming out from here and here. The eight bit will be coming out. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. So this is the things about this. Let us go to the next line. I hope something you have understood. Something or completely. 64k by 8 RAM by say. Are you understanding this? Hmm? Yes. Okay. The same thing only some chip select. We are talking about the chip select. It is kind of enable, okay? Enable signal if anywhere, any, any, many, many, many places you have done, and that is a chip select input. Select the particular RAM. Mm, complete chip will be selected. You may be using more than one chip. I will see the example later on, and uh, uh, the uh, read write is bar here. Read write bar it should be given here. Okay. Input to specify the read or write operation. We know that hmm. if if goes high, then read. If goes low, then what? Right? Yes or no? Just now in the time, timing diagram, you have seen them. If this line is high, then which operation is going to be performed? Read. Read. If it is zero, then write. Okay. Right. Okay. So eight bits are there. So eight bit output line is there. Now let us read the last bullet. When chip select equals to zero, the chip is not selected because you know it is having no bubble. If it is a bubble, having a bubble, suppose, then it it would be considered that oh, it is a uh, active low. It is now active high. So once it is zero, it will not be selected, and all It's the data outputs are in the high bit state. With CS equals to one, the data output lines carry the eight bits of the selected word. Means to say, if this say this this is zero, and you have say inside only, you have a buffer. That tri-stated buffer. Have I discussed anything about the tri-stated buffer? And symbol for that is what? Okay. 
is kind of this. Rashtad buffer, did I say? We have discussed many things in the first or second level. No, sir. Not discussed. Try stated. Okay. So, um, we have discussed, but you are not remembering try stated things. When you are discussing about the TTL, etc., during that time you have discussed. But the symbol also, hmm, I have shown. If you want, I can show that, but you are not remembering. Try stated. So, with the MOSFET itself, I'll be able to uh, tell you what is this uh, things. I have shown you. It's not new. Hmm, try stated. Let me uh, uh, tell it here only. I don't know whether you'll be able to understand here or not. Say uh, it's not a place to do. Try study buffer. I'll be uh, talking about what how to get a space. Not getting a space. Okay, uh, I'll make it. Uh, I'll take a blank space here. Just wait. I have to talk about the tri student buffer with MOSFET, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose. What is this MOSFET? And what is this MOSFET? Tell. Hmm? The top one is PMOS, bottom one is NMOS. NMOS. Okay. okay, I connected in this way, parallelly. Okay, and then hmm. now I will be taking this space to When CS goes high, it is uh, this is CS equals to one. This is zero or not? Yes. Yes. Zero. So P MOSFET is on because its gate is zero. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And MOS is also on. Also on. So on this switch, it is a kind of switch. It's called transmission gate. The switch is on. Okay, switch is on. So, or uh, the in value of in whatever is, say one that will be going through this switch and out also will be one, isn't it? Do we agree or not? Switch is closed means it is conducting. And MOSFET is also yes, conducting. The MOSFET is also conducting. Both are conducting. So, in will be whatever. That will be the out. If in is zero, out is also zero. Right? But suppose CS is uh, zero. Let me take another color. Suppose you are taking CS equals to zero, then what? What is the CS bar? That is uh, one. Yes. This is zero. So what? What about the conductivity of this uh, two MOSFETs? So they will not conduct. They will not conduct. So in will not get path. Whatever is in doesn't matter. In will not get path to out. So what is the status of output node? It is not connected to anywhere. It is in high bed state, right? So that's what is written. The zero 
सी एस इज लेकिन हाई बेड स्टेट सी एस वन डेटा आउटपुट लाइन क्या आई मीन इफ यू यू हैव हैव हियर विल दैट काइंड काइंड ऑफ ऑफ दिस स्विचेस स्विच और टीजी बेस्ट और यू कैन से मल्टीप्लेसर काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स सो एट विल बी रिक्वायर्ड हियर this kind of symbol is maybe this kind of buffer buffer symbol this this is going to make this if it is one then in is equal to out okay whatever in is that is out understood yes yes sir so, here you have some smaller uh ram chips having 64k by 8 64k by 8 understood k by 4 uh, ram is understood na now you are using that and you are going to make 256k by 8 ram okay so 4 is required here 4 and they have been connected in this way so decoder has been used so every 64k uh, uh, by 8 ram is requiring 8 bit of information for input data or output data if it is ram you can read and write so input output both is going to go through this possibly our output is having the same outline but input is coming through 802 87 of course it may go back to a processor through that same line anyway the eight sorry 16 address lines is coming here okay everywhere everywhere i mean to say uh, every Here, sixteen line is there. Okay, but the sixteen line you can address only to to the bus sixteen means or that uh, you have calculated sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six. Ah, sixty five thousand sixty five thousand five hundred. Ah, uh, or that sixty three thirty six thirty six thirty six thirty six. So this many uh, can be accessed. so you are going to access more four times more no four chips are there so four times means to the what two two more address lines are there so that is here given to uh, the decoder and decoder is going to give four output and when these two are zero zero this one is going to be high if select or not this is high yes yes sir when it is zero one this one will be high okay And when both are one, this will be high. So at a time, only one chip is selected, and from there, ah, uh, from there, one row is read, and that also depends on which row is read. That depends on these bit patterns of the system address, system bit address. If this all the system bits of the address is uh, say zero zero zero, all all system bits are zero. Then the zero throw, zero throw will be giving the output through these two. Uh, this uh, output buffer or say bash will be going into the bash. What is bash and all? We'll be discussing a little bit. This is nothing but uh, parallel lines. Okay, through which signals are transmitted or received. Okay, so similarly, when this uh, zero one is given, then data will be going through uh, read from the second chip from the Second chip means uh, from the top, from this. Okay, when this uh, address line is one uh, zero, address lines these two address lines for decoder, then it will be read from here. And if it is one one, then it will be read from here. Now, which row is being read? That depends on the bit pattern of this or address of the system bit. Is it understood? Yes, sir. of course we have discussed a lot here what is what you are finding your row number of row is not sufficient and because you have a 64k k row or this many row 65536 row is there that is not sufficient for you this memory uh those many bytes are not sufficient for you you need more four times more two times more so two chip three times more three chip Four times more four chips are connected. 
is it uh, not expanding up memory and decoding yes, yes. Right. Thing will uh, end up here. Now, if your uh, uh, byte having eight bits and your 64k by eight RAM is having only eight bit in a row, that is not sufficient for you. So you need 16 uh, possibly. Okay, then you can connect in this way, and we have discussed earlier also, isn't it? Yes, Prasad. Yes, we have discussed many things about the expansion, so that is also over. We don't want to speak anymore. This is these diagrams are taken from your book. Earlier I have taken from different. Otherwise, basic thing is same. All will be see see CS CS is going to here and here also and uh, parallelly connected. So both the chips will be parallelly selected, and hence you will be getting eight bit eight bit means sixteen bit outputs here when the memory is read or when you are writing 8 bit here going to uh, this uh, chip and another 8 bit I'm going to in this chip for write operation. Of course, along with that, you have to address it properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, read writer control has to be given. It is given to everywhere the same thing. Okay? If you are writing, same w, uh, and w, uh, w bar will be in there, or write bar will be there. And if you are uh, reading, then write, read, write will be one. So it is very simple. Now we will be starting something new called programmable logic design, programmable logic arrays, and programmable array logic. This will be, I think, last topic of this. We will go to the uh, kit model. Something left over in the first model that will be visual very log fundamentals to be discussing later on after the model is complete. <laughs> so, PLD programmable logic device is a generic name given to a group of integrated circuits, certain kind of circuits that can be configured to perform desired logic functions. It has fuse links to be configured. ROMs, PROMs, EPROMs are programmable but no, are not normally classified as PLDs. During programming, fuses are blown that must be disconnected so as to obtain a particular configuration. The gates in a PLD are divided into AND or array or plane that are connected together to provide and or SOP implementation. The initial state of PLD has all the uses intact. I mean to say, it is a class of, I mean, chips, integrated circuits, and normally ROM, PROM, EPROM are not classified into this. And it is having AND plane or plane that we'll be seeing very soon. And there are various symbology uh, we have to understand. In this diagram, the diagram A is showing a cross on the junction. It is indicating that the linked or fuse link is there. Okay, it is not fused. It is still intact. Okay, and B is telling that the fuse which was uh, placed during the fabrication is no more there. It has been fused. Means and there is no connection between A and B, line A and B. Is it understood? And the C one is telling that there is a permanent connection here between the line A and line B. Yes, these terminologies uh, or you can say symbologies are to be remembered. Intact fuse, Intact intact fuse is intact, means it's there. Here, are no fuse, no fuse link, or fuse link is blown. 
and it is a permanent condition. Now, there are, this will be, I mean, this, this kind of symbology will be used later on, very soon. So, you remember that. Types of PLDs, there are four types here, and they are PROM, programmable ROM, PAL, programmable array logic, PLA, programmable logic array, and GAL, G, generic array logic. Okay. We will try to discuss one by one, starting with, say, uh, PROM. PROM types, there are four types are there. In PROM itself, there are four types. First type is fabricated by the vendor, means the, the chip maker, foundries, or maybe vendor may be ordering and making the chip and selling out in the, selling out in the market. So, semiconductor company makes it uh, on the basis of the submitted truth table by the customer. Okay. It is costly due to special fee for custom masking, if not mass produced. Means um, if a vendor is giving its truth table and uh, making some chips, so definitely uh, the foundry, whatever, generally they are making some chips. It will not be like that. Mm, they are processing steps, but chip making steps may be different. Whereas you are giving a new mm, um, things, new truth table, according to that they have to make. So fee may be a little more. And if it is not fabricated in a uh, batch, in a batch, mass produced, if you don't do, it's not mass produced, then it may be costly. For small quantity, it is uh, more economical to use a second type. PROM called the programmable read only memory or PROM. Customer in the lab can blow the fuses. Initially, when fabrication is done, fuses will be intact, but um, later on, it can be done in the lab by the customer who is purchasing by application of some high voltage process using PROM programmer to the device through a special pin. A blown fuse defines a binary zero state and an intact fuse gives a binary one state. Can you remember, Pratham, we have discussed about the diode ROM? No, sir. I can't remember diode ROM. Diode ROM, uh, Rishi, I mean, Harsha Tripathi. Bursa is absent today. Yes, sir. Diode ROM, can you remember? Yes, sir. In that presence of uh, diode was indicating what? Uh, sir, yeah, now I remember. One. Sir. one, sir. One. Absence of diode was zero. Okay. Zero. Similar kind of things is done. The diode is conducting, uh, being what? It is conducting and connecting that uh, horizontal line with the vertical line, isn't it? Remember that? Yes, sir. The diode. Yes, sir. Connecting the horizontal line with the vertical lines. Okay. Here, instead of diode, you are using fuse. Okay. It's a name is changed. Okay. So, a blown fuse defines a zero or binary one. Sorry, it's binary zero or low. And um, if there is a um, fuse, then it is indicating a uh, binary one state. The same way, we have already discussed uh, that thing and um, that discussion is good enough to understand all those things. The third type of PROM is the erasable PROM or EPROM, which can be restructured to the initial state even though it has been programmed previously. And for that, you need the UV light. We have also discussed all those things. The fourth one is the electrically erasable or flow talks we have discussed, isn't it? It is getting repeated. So I'll just leave this topic quickly and go to another topic. So at these uh, things, we have uh, discussed about four type of uh, PLDs. 
from PAL, PLA and GAL. Now, what kind of, uh, as I said that uh, and or plane will be there, array or plane, okay, for in this uh, PLD. So, which one is having what? Which one is the programmable? Is it and plane is programmable or or plane is programmable? That we are going to see now. Programmable means there will fuse. You can blow the fuse and uh, disconnect the connection. Okay, that that's the way you are going to program. Disconnect the connection with the, with the vertical line and the horizontal line means you are in absence of diode. It's indicating zero. Here, in from but they are fixed and array and programmable or remember that from in which or array is or plane is programmable whereas and array is fixed you cannot program it in pal programmable array logic or is fixed this reverse case or is fixed and and plane is programmable it is reverse case okay it is reverse case or not? It was yes, earlier sir. not programmable. It is now mm, fixed mm, like that. So here in this case, both are programmable in PLA and as well as or planes are programmable. <coughs> Internal structure is given here. PLA with three inputs, four product terms and two Outputs are given here. Okay. Can I, should I continue discussion or time is over? What is that? Sir, time is over. Okay, then we'll stop today. I'll continue in the next class. Today you have the quiz. Are you remembering? Yes. Pratham.